Hey folks, and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Today we're taking a look at two big crossovers. On my left, the Subaru Ascent, and on my right, the Hyundai Palisade. Now, both of these are meant to do the same thing, haul your family and all your stuff in comfort, but they take different approaches to get there. So in this video, we're gonna look at the interiors, we're gonna look at the storage, but I wanna go for a nice long drive and see how the fuel economy compares between a small turbocharged four-cylinder and a big V6. Let's go to it. Let's break down the powertrains here. So over here in the Hyundai Palisade, we have a 3.8 liter V6. It's making 292 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. And that is sent through an automatic transmission. Now over here in the Subaru, we have a smaller 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder boxer engine. This thing is making 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. And that is sent through a CVT. So once again, both of these vehicles are very similarly powered when you look at the numbers, but they're getting there with an entirely different philosophy, naturally aspirated here and turbocharged in the Subaru. And then when you're talking about the all-wheel drive systems, Subaru of course uses its legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive, and that is full-time all-wheel drive, whereas over here in the Hyundai, we do have a front-wheel drive based all-wheel drive setup. So this vehicle is only going to drive the front wheels and then it will go all-wheel drive when you ask for it. So those are going to be some interesting characteristics to look at when we're out there doing our fuel economy drive and how they affect how much gas these two burn. Let's talk trim levels and pricing. First, the Hyundai. So this is the Palisade Urban. Now here in Canada, there are only two trims of the Hyundai Palisade, either the Urban or the Calligraphy. Calligraphy is top trim with all of the luxury features. Urban's just a little step down and mostly it's about the styling. You're gonna notice you're getting no chrome here. You're getting that blacked out grill. And then of course, finished in white, I call this the Stormtrooper spec. Now when it comes to cost, this Palisade Urban here in Canada, it's gonna sell for about $57,000. Now over here, we have the Subaru Ascent Limited. And just like our Hyundai, this is just one step down from the top trim, at least here in Canada. Now, because it's the Limited, you are getting that chrome bar, you're getting some chrome up there around the windows and a couple different accents to make it look a little different. Although to me, most of these ascents look fairly similar. It's not a striking difference going trim to trim. Now, when you're looking at the price, this Subaru, as it sits here in this video, is just over $54,000 here in Canada. So it is a hair more affordable than the Hyundai. And you know what? Now, why don't you drop in the comments and just tell me which one of these two crossovers do you think looks better? Now let's take a look at the second, third row and the cargo. And the first thing I like to start with is the baby seat situation. So we have the captain's chairs here in our second row. They both have lower latch and they both have top tethers. Back there in the third row, you have top tethers in all three positions, but you only have one lower latch position and it's on the driver's side. So something to keep in mind. So I'll climb in now. So this is 42.4 inches of second row leg room, and it's quite a bit. And I have enough headroom, knee room's fine, my knees aren't too tall, I could definitely sit back here uh, no problem. And then what I like, there's quite a few inches of adjustability here, which is excellent. So you can really give those third row passengers more space. I'll pull it forward just a little bit. Still a decently comfortable position for me before I climb in the back. But before I do, let me talk amenities. I do have my own HVAC controls down here. I do have a seated, heated, sorry, second row seat, which is great. And then also a 110 down there, plus USB ports kind of secretly hidden here in the seats. And another feature I love to point out, these sunshades, especially if you have kids in rear facing child seats. And then I'll also talk about my kids real quick with these cup holders. I like the way they're molded into the doors because my little kids can actually reach these and that's generally who's riding back here. So also like the cup holders here. Now let's climb into the third. 
And here we go. So this is 31.4 inches of rear seat leg room. And my knee room's not bad. What you're probably gonna notice though is my knees are quite tall, so that's not really comfortable. And then I'm just touching the roof. I would say I have just enough headroom, but uh, yeah, not really that comfortable. And I stand at six foot two. So no doubt this, this third row is just big enough for full size adults, but still you probably want smaller people back here. I do have to point out though, I have power recline. So if I was to recline, that's pretty nice. And then I also have my own USB-C port and my own cup holders over here. So quite a few amenities in the third row too. I like that. Now let's head back and look at the storage. Powered hatch here in our Palisade Urban. And now you will see with the third row in use, you're not getting a massive amount of storage space here, but it's a little more than I would say you'd expect out of a standard crossover or a smaller crossover. And then what's great is we do have power folding, oh, other way, power folding third row. And once that's folded down with a 60-40 split, you're getting a massive amount of cargo space, which is, uh, yeah, it's quite nice. And then I'll also show you here underneath the floor, a little more cargo space. Plus you're getting a spot there to store your uh, sunshade. You're getting some tools there to change your spare tire. And yes, there is a proper spare tire down underneath this thing. So uh, a pretty good amount of space here in the Hyundai, but let's see how the Subaru compares. Now let's see how the Subaru compares. And on paper, it's just a hair smaller, but we'll see kind of how I fit in here in the real world. First up, the child seat situation. We have lower latch on both of our captain's chairs and then one lower latch position in the third row. And it's just like the Hyundai, it's on the driver's side. And then when it comes to top tethers, there's five of them back here. So you do have some flexibility with those. So this is, 38.6 inches of second row legroom on paper. And this seat does actually seem pretty far back, but you know what, I still have enough space. You can see knee room is okay. My knees don't feel all that tall, which is nice. And we do have a huge panoramic sunroof here, which is helping actually, because I'm fitting up into it, but I do have enough headroom. And again, I stand at six foot two. Now again, like the Hyundai, a massive amount of adjustability here in the second row, which I really do appreciate. And then when it comes to amenities, the same things. All of my HVAC controls, I have a heated second row seat. I'm getting USB-C and USB-A plus little fold out cup holders there. And there's cup holders in the door, just like the Hyundai and there's sunshades, just like the Hyundai. So a lot of things here are super similar. Let's see how the third rows compare. Oh, I'm child locked folks. I'm child locked. <laughs> And we're back now to climb into the third row. So there's a handle on the side that folds and tumbles. There we go. And now I can climb in. So this is just 31 inches of third row leg room and I don't fit. <laughs> My headroom is terrible here. Honestly, compared to the Hyundai, this is just not comparable. I don't fit here whatsoever. And of course this seat could be moved forward, but in its most rearward position, I don't have enough leg room and my knees are feeling tall. So basically in every single way, this third row is just not as big as the Hyundai's. And I would say not big enough for a full size adult. This is definitely more for children or people maybe you don't like. So we're talking about amenities though, very similar. I do have cup holders over here. I have two USB ports over here on my right, which is one more than the Hyundai offered. So a couple more amenities, but when it comes to space, it's not great back here in the Ascent. Now let's go see how the cargo room stacks up. So again, on paper, just like with the leg room, this is slightly less cargo space than what was in the Hyundai. This is 17.6 cubic feet behind the third row. The Hyundai offers 18 cubic feet. Although again, in the real world, this feels super similar to the Hyundai when it comes to storage back here. Now on our limited model, we do not have power fold. We have manual fold, which isn't that big a deal. But yes, at this price point, it might be nice to get the power seats there as well. When you fold these down, just like the Palisade, you do get a uh, massive amount of cargo space. But again, on paper, it is just a hair less than the Hyundai. I can also show you, just like the Palisade, we do get a bit of storage underneath this flap. 
there's your sunshade in there, a couple tools tucked under there, and there is also a spare tire down underneath. But overall, when it comes to hauling people and stuff, the Hyundai Palisade is definitely better, especially when you look at that third row space. All right, folks, and here we are in the Palisade. So first things first, we're pulling into the gas station. We're gonna fuel up, and then we're gonna go out and do a fuel economy loop. And the most important thing today is we're gonna do an identical loop with both of these vehicles so we can compare. So yeah, I'll fill up now, and then we'll hit the road, and I'll talk to you about how the Palisade drives on the way. Let's do it. All right, filled up, folks, and now we reset our trip right there and away we go. So first of all, I do have an eco mode here in the Hyundai and I am gonna run it in eco mode. Talking about the conditions, it is two degrees Celsius outside today. So just a little above freezing. And we do have winter tires on both of these vehicles. So that's also the same. So we're gonna run the same loop back to back and we'll be able to report on the numbers. All right, folks, rolling on here in the Palisade, and we're almost done our fuel economy loop, so we'll get to those numbers soon. But now let me just talk to you about how this Hyundai actually drives and uh, a little bit about the interior. So the first thing that stands out to me anyways is the fact that the Palisade still uses all physical buttons and knobs. Many other Hyundai models, like the Tucson comes to mind, they've gone all to those capacitive touch sensitive buttons, which I'm just not a fan of. I feel like they're a little more dangerous. You have to take your eyes off of the road to actually go down and see what you're doing. And just the tactile feel of having buttons is a big deal to me. So that is subjective, but that is one of the ways that I think the Palisade kind of stands out within the Hyundai lineup. And it's definitely something that I appreciate. So I'm making a left turn right now, and one thing I really like about this Palisade, the camera system, when you turn your signal on, you actually see that side of the vehicle. So when I have my left signal on right there, you can see the left, and now I'll signal right to make a lane change. And you can see very clearly, if anyone's in that lane, move over and cancel it and the camera goes away. I just think it's a really smart system. Other brands have started to adopt it and I think Hyundai was one of the first to have that operating with your turn signal. And then I do want to talk about all of the different uh, driver assistance systems in this Palisade. We do have lane keep assist. You have a button on your steering wheel to be able to turn on and off the steering assist here, which I like. And then you can also adjust your settings for the adaptive cruise control, like the following distance and things like that. Now, I've been driving this Palisade for the better part of a week. And the one thing I'll say about the, uh, the driver assist systems is they're not that aggressive. I, In my opinion, this one is really nicely balanced in terms of it does want to kind of take you to a different place in the lane that maybe you want to drive, but it's not really putting a lot of torque into the wheel to get you there. Meaning, if you don't want to drive exactly where the Palisade wants to drive, that's okay. You don't feel like you're fighting against the system. It feels like more of just a suggestion. And then another thing I'll say about Hyundais, and I think it's a bit of a safety issue, but it depends how you look at it. You can take your hands off the wheel for quite a long time before it says, hey, put your hands back on the wheel. I've had it go 30 seconds to a minute sometimes without actually saying anything to me, which on the one hand is nice because you know, and, and I will say it does a nice job. I haven't had it do anything strange. I haven't had phantom braking. So in that respect, it's nice that you know the Hyundai is essentially driving itself. And if you take your hands off the wheel, you can basically trust it. The issue is that if there's a problem and if it does move out of the lane or something unexpected happens, the driver is still at fault. So you should never take your hands off the wheel. And the fact that it allows you to do that for so long yeah, I think it lulls you into a bit of a sense of security and it only takes one time for something bad to happen. So on the positive side, I really like the way that this Hyundai looks around and sees vehicles around it and handles all of the semi-autonomous stuff. And on the negative side, sometimes I think it's almost too good and making you feel too confident with it and that could definitely lead to a problem. 
Last things I want to touch on before I pull back into the gas station are just the driving experience and the powertrain here. So first of all, like the V6 power, comes on nice and low in the rev range and because it's naturally aspirated, super predictable, super linear power, none of that small turbocharged feeling. Uh, and of course, a real 8-speed automatic transmission, so you're getting those nice downshifts, they come on uh, quickly and you feel that power. So yeah, powertrain is solid. And then suspension, the way it actually drives, it takes care of you. It's comfortable going down the road. I have no complaints. And actually, in some ways, the Palisade drives a bit smaller than it actually is. I don't know if that's a function of the suspension or just the steering feel, but uh, yeah, it doesn't feel like a massive SUV. And here we are back at the gas station. So got it in park. We can look down at the trip now. We did 46.6 kilometers and we managed 10.2 liters per 100K, which seems decent for this vehicle. Now I'll go uh, fill it up and we'll do the math ourselves and see how it compares. Now let's do the math ourselves. So we take our 4.66 liters used. We divide that by the distance. That's 46.6 kilometers. Multiply it by 100 to move the decimal point. And for the first time ever that I've done these fuel economy tests, it's an even number. It is 10 liters per 100 kilometers, which is uh, pretty cool that it's even. And 10 liters per 100 is just 0.2 better than what the computer said, so basically the same. And for the US folks, that's 23 and a half miles per gallon. So there's our numbers on the Hyundai. Let's go jump into Subaru and see how it handles. And here we are in the Subaru folks, back at the same gas station beginning our trip. So once again, we're gonna run the identical fuel economy loop. While we're out there, I'll tell you what this Subaru feels like. And then when we get back, we'll be able to compare the numbers. And one of the points I haven't brought up yet, but I will tell you right now, is that these two vehicles are actually identical when it comes to fuel economy. 21 miles per gallon combined, 19 in the city, and 25 on the highway. So yes, when it comes to the EPA ratings, both of these things are exactly the same. So that's gonna make our test even more interesting now. Let's go fill up the Subaru and hit the road. Okay, filled up now, so first step is to go in and we will zero out our trip. The Subaru actually has a trip button up here right next to the gauge cluster, which feels a little bit old school. And uh, there we go, so we reset trip B, we'll get our average, and now let's head off and yeah, do the exact same loop we did in the Hyundai. And now here we are driving in the Subaru Ascent. So the first thing I want to talk about again is the driver assistance systems. Here in Subarus, it's called the EyeSight system and it is actually standard here on the Ascent, so that's good to know. Now EyeSight is, is kind of twofold. It's monitoring what's going on around the vehicle, but it's also monitoring the driver. There is an eye monitor in here, so it's watching to make sure that my eyes are actually on the road. Now I have the cruise control set right now at 80 kilometers per hour, and I will just take my hands off the wheel. Now it does a nice job at identifying the lane markers, keeping me nice and straight and in the center of the lane. And I'm just waiting to see, even this one will go, there, keep your hands on the steering wheel, it just came up. Even that's a pretty long time that it will let me take my hands right off of the wheel, which is definitely interesting. Now, just like the Hyundai, I will say this thing has done a great job at identifying the lines, keeping me in the middle of the lane, doing the things that it's supposed to do. The one difference though, is that the Subaru to me just is a little more aggressive with its steering wheel. The torque that it puts into the wheel to kind of move it where the it wants to be in the lane 
it just feels heavier than the Hyundai. It feels heavier than most other brands. And it's why for me personally, I generally find myself turning eyesight off because I just don't like feeling like the vehicle is trying to drive yeah, differently than I am. I want it to help me. And in this case, it just always feels like it kind of hinders me and gets annoying. So I'll admit that is a totally subjective thing, but it's something to keep in mind that Subaru EyeSight, more so I'd say than some other brands, the system really wants you to drive the way that it wants you to. Talking about the interior and ergonomics here on the Subaru, it's a little different than the Hyundai. The Ascent uses a mix of physical buttons and the touchscreen. So for example, if I want to adjust my fan speed, that's over here on the actual touchscreen. If I want to adjust the temperature, well, there's physical buttons over here to do that. So you get a bit of a mix. And honestly, I don't necessarily think one is better than the other. It depends what you prefer. The Subaru does work fine, though all the controls are right where I want them to be. The, the issue I do have is with Starlink in general. And the biggest thing is it's just, it's kind of slow to respond. The screens take a second to switch between each other. And, and as infotainment systems go, it feels a little more complicated and a little slower, especially than what we have in the Hyundai. So infotainment, I will also kind of score in the Palisades favor. Now, overall driving, the first point I have to make is these two drive very similar. Neither one of them feels much bigger or heavier or anything like that. The steering is on the light side in both of them, but that's okay. Again, you don't want sort of heavy connected steering in a vehicle like this. You want it to be easy and both of them are easy to drive. When it comes to sight lines, I think the Subaru is a little bit better. I feel like I'm sitting taller in the Ascent and I have a bit more glass around me, but that is a pretty eh, negligible difference. Just having slightly better sight lines in the Subaru. And then I'm here on a totally dry day. It's been raining a tiny bit, but uh, I haven't really got the chance to test the all wheel drive systems. What I can tell you about the power is that they both feel equally powerful, but in a different way. And the defining characteristic is the CVT here in the Subaru versus the eight speed in the Hyundai. This CVT, well, it's kind of a typical CVT. You put your foot into it, you feel like the RPM spike a bit, and then the speed of the vehicle takes a moment to catch up to where the RPM is. But the actual power rolls on pretty nicely, pretty aggressively, and off the line, I don't feel like you lose very much here in the Subaru. So it's not really a power issue at all. It's just the power delivery here in the Subaru feels a little less satisfying, a little less kind of connected as the real geared transmission over in the Hyundai. So once again, in the power department, I wouldn't pick one over the other, but you have to point out that the Subaru delivers its power differently thanks to the CVT. And here we are at the same gas station, folks. Now just a word on the loop. We did right around the same speeds the whole time. We were mostly on uh, country roads, like side roads and uh, secondary highways. I would say the speed was between 80 and 90 kilometers per hour. So somewhere around 50, 55 miles per hour. And like I mentioned, all side roads. So coming through small towns, lots of stop signs. So lots of stop and go. So not just sort of cruising numbers. And here we are, just pulled back in. And I, uh, I'm pretty impressed by this, folks. We managed, according to the computer, 10.2 liters per 100 kilometers. That is the exact same number that we got in the Hyundai. And once again, I'll remind you that the EPA rates these two vehicles at the exact same number. So, so far, we have proven the EPA correct. And now we'll go fill it up and we'll do the math ourselves and see if that changes the number very much. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I gotta say, I've never had this happen before where I've tested two vehicles and they got the exact same number. So it is a video full of firsts. <laughs> All filled up, now we'll do the math ourselves. So we take our 5.496 liters of fuel. We divide that by the distance, which was just slightly longer here in the Subaru at 49.4 kilometers. We move the decimal and that comes out to 11.1 
liters per 100 kilometers. So when we did the math ourselves, the Subaru was slightly worse, which is honestly what I would expect in the real world because of the all full-time all-wheel drive here in the Subaru. And of course, for the US folks, 11.1 .1 liters is 21.1 miles per gallon. So when we did the math ourselves, the Subaru was slightly thirstier, although I think it is also safe to say that between these two crossovers, you're not gonna find a massive difference when it comes to the fuel economy. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this one, and I'm gonna tell you which one I would buy, but there is one caveat I have to mention with pricing. Here in Canada, the Subaru Ascent starts right around $45,000 in its most basic trim. The Hyundai Palisade, on the other hand, this is its most basic trim. So it starts around $57,000. So there is no competition that at the base levels, the Subaru is gonna save you a ton of money. You're still gonna get the same space and the same powertrain. So at the base, I definitely lean Ascent. However, when you look at the vehicles as they sit here today, I would absolutely choose the Hyundai Palisade. The, the space in the third row is a huge deal for a vehicle like this that is going to be hauling people back there a lot. And then the fact that it also offers slightly more cargo space just makes this a more convenient vehicle for families. Add on to that the good fuel economy and styling of this thing. And yeah, I think the Palisade just comes together as the better package at this price point. So that's it for this one. And that's how I feel about it. But now I need to hear from you. So please go into the comments and let me know which one you would buy, Hyundai Palisade or Subaru Ascent. While you're down there, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit join to become a member, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.